we finally got good yields. So it's been quite a while since we've had an actual Cubane video and here one is. Um, I've been chasing this for quite a while in the background. Uh, this is the Deals Alder product and it's probably, in my opinion, it's probably the hardest step. I'm not even worried about this cyclo edition or anything. I just had failure after failure after failure. Um, I think that this is the eighth attempt and I finally got some good yields and I'm excited to show you that process. There's definitely been a lot of struggle. There's been a whole lot of tar. Um, I've read just about every paper there is on Cubane. Finally, we've gotten somewhere. So this video is not going to be terribly in depth, but it'll be going over the whole process from a dipic acid to this. Not in too much detail, but enough. It's not a how-to video, but there's enough detail to where you could, you know, do it yourself if you wanted to. I wouldn't recommend it. Everything's pretty toxic in this process, but uh, hopefully we can explore the science together, and I'm excited for you guys to see this. If you'd like to follow along with the Cubane journey, be sure to like and subscribe. Um, shout out to my patrons. They are one of the only reasons that I can actually bring you this video. So if you'd like to support my work directly, uh, the Patreon link is in the description below. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. All right, so I'm going to start by crushing everything up nicely so it can be used. Okay, now the barium hydroxide, about 20 grams. I add the barium hydroxide into my 500 gram dipic acid container and give it a good shake to mix everything. Luckily the dipic acid comes finely ground already. Next I add the mix to a 1000 ml flask and take absolutely forever to do this because I don't have a 2440 funnel. I get everything set up for dry distillation. I add the Claisen adapter to extend the column a bit. It helps with the adipic acid buildup. The mix begins to melt in like the 100s and it'll start to distill over at about 285. 295 is the optimal temp here and going over about 310 or so is bad news because the adipic acid will start to clog your condenser and you definitely don't want anything to explode. This process takes absolutely forever and the distillation took me probably 6 or 8 hours. I treated the crude cyclopentanone with a lot of potassium carbonate. What that does is it gets rid of the adipic acid left over and it also starts to dry it out a little bit. Everything gets redistilled between 128 and 132. And it's time for the keto. So I open up my toluene and realize I filled it way too much. Holy shit. I then attempt to pour some in a beaker and of course spill it absolutely everywhere. I'm using about 200 mils or so. Next I weigh out some PTSA, about a 0.1 molar equivalent to my cyclopenanone will do the job. After that, I set up my Dean Stark and realize I have nothing to support it. I pre fill the Dean Stark with about 20 mils of toluene. I accounted for this in my original measurement. 
I went to dry out just the PTSA and the toluene first, but it really wasn't necessary, so I added the cyclopentanone in shortly after. This then went under reflux, and it can last anywhere between 18 and 30 hours. Uh, mine was either 24 or 26. It's best to do this in one stretch, and as soon as the water stops coming over, the reflux is done. I set up my key towel for distillation. I'm going to try and cheat a little bit and do a simple distillation just to grab some of that mostly toluene. I ended up adding a Vigoro column, which is actually really important on this step. I ended up keeping the first fraction for later because there's definitely ketel in it. The ketel smells really minty, so it's kind of easy to tell apart. After getting over mostly toluene, I switched to the vacuum. I cut a first fraction off and distilled over my ketel consistent with the literature I'm following. I got about 100 grams plus the extra that's in the other fractions, which I just haven't touched yet. I like to verify the ketel with a BP test. It's really easy to do. Uh, you're looking for ranges in the 150s. Next up is the bromination. Now, this is some old footage, but it's the exact same procedure. The bromine is added really carefully over about two hours with a very strict temperature control. I can't tell you how much tar I have made on this step. Now comes a methanolic sodium hydroxide addition. A nearly saturated solution of sodium hydroxide with methanol is slowly added with more strict temperature control. The solution begins to darken, and that's when this part of the reaction is complete. The mix is then refluxed for 20 hours in one go, and finally everything gets poured into ice cold water and settled and filtered. Okay, so we got a total yield of about 8 grams, which is actually decent considering I wasted half of it trying to extract it out of that water in that water mix in the last step. Um, here's some of it right now, just trying. It's, I had to do, uh, I had to try a bunch of different methods to do it. What I found was the best method was to chill the whole thing overnight and let it settle at the bottom. And then you can decant off the water and filter the rest and then you kind of spread it out and dry it and it looks like this. So that I guess was one of the problems, but the major problem was in the either in the bromination or the sodium hydroxide addition, things were just tarring up and never coming back. And it happened so many times. So what the hell was even wrong? Well, so the main problem is that the synthesis is completely from scratch. And I finally figured that out that you know, things needed to be scrutinized way more and reagents needed to be of way higher quality. Um, so there's another guy on YouTube right now who's uh, doing a cubane synthesis with uh, like purchase materials and stuff, and I'm sure he'll have no problem getting through. He, he won't have the same problem that I did unless he, for some reason, strays away from the literature and, you know, tries his own thing. Basically, the number one problem here was the dioxane. The dioxane needs to be nearly 100% pure. It has to be as close as possible. Um, it can't have any side products in it. It can't have any peroxides. It will just shoot your yield down to like 1%, which is why I got like a gram that one time. I kept getting a gram. Um, EXNF in his video, I would assume... Given the method that he used to make dioxane, that's probably why he got about a half a gram, I think it was. Basically making the dioxane, like I used a Doug's lab procedure, which is pretty common. So you would react sulfuric acid with ethylene glycol in a flask and distill it over, and then you would treat it, and then you would distill it over again, and that's it. However, that process still makes really crude dioxane, and it cannot be used for this procedure. It can in a lot of different things but definitely not this. So really what I had to do was, you know, do the first main step uh, under a simple distillation. Uh, react the ethylene glycol and the sulfuric acid with just a simple distillation and just do that and then fractionally distill it with a big, big row column and then treat it 
and then fractionally distill it twice again. And that gives you pure enough dioxane to where you can use it for this procedure. And I'm sure it's required that pure for other procedures too. Um, this one, it was definitely really important. Uh, anything that's left in that dioxane, the mix just attacks it and it just tars it up. And I was getting product, but you could see it was just kind of like encased in clumps of tar. And that's what, that's what had happened was it, was it was driving way too many side reactions and it just was, you know, I was getting product. It just was not usable. As soon as you put it in the sulfuric acid for the deep protection, it was just done. So I hope this helps anyone if you're striving to make your own cubane from household materials, especially because the bought materials are really expensive. Like the resin is expensive, the key towel, uh, you can get it for like a hundred bucks, but it's from China and it's, it requires a lot of setting up and stuff. And it's just, it's a real pain. So if you're trying to make everything yourself, um, I will tell you, it's a hell of a lot of work. It's a lot of work to get Cubane from scratch. I really hope this helps any prospective cubers and they can move along through the process. So I will be screaming towards completion now at this point. Um, the deep protection has already started. Uh, so the next video will be actually making Cubane. So it will be from this point that deals all their product. Uh, through the deep protection because it's only 30 hours in sulfuric acid. There's really nothing to film and then the photocyclic addition and then the final treatment and the final product So that will be the next video uh, So that process is started now uh, Hopefully I can bring that to you guys in a few days and I'm really excited about all of it If you guys enjoyed the video be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys later